Let's talk about another legal battle because I heard the result of this. I, I heard people talking about what Samuel Alito on the Supreme Court said this week. I don't think a lot of people have a strong idea of why he said what he said. So I'm going to give you some background. Stay with me for a second because the story is it takes a few twists and turns. And then I promise you it'll be worth your time. All right. But here's the basic gist of the story. This week, Supreme Court Justice Sam Alito, he argued that excluding potential jurors from hearing a case, uh, even after they say their faith might cause them to treat the case differently, that amounts to religious discrimination. And it's a batshit crazy thing to think, but I'm going to tell you how he got there, okay? So, and, and all of this, it shines a light on how the most conservative members of the Supreme Court treat Christian bigotry different than other forms of hate. They want to give faith-based hate a pass while stopping other forms of hate theoretically. Okay, here's the story. It involves a woman named Jean Finney. She was a corrections officer, like working in a prison. And in court, she described herself as a lesbian who presents masculine. And she started working there, I think, in the early aughts, in the early 2000s. She was working with her then husband, and another woman. And in 2010, by that time, she and her husband at the time, they had gotten divorced. They still worked together, awkward, but they were divorced. And in 2010, that other woman transfers to a different facility. And because she transferred to a new facility, the two of them then start a relationship together. Okay, fine, because they're not like one of them's not the subordinate of the other now. It's not weird workplace drama. You know what I mean? She's working somewhere else. It's all good. But their relationship infuriated Jean Finney's ex-husband, John, who still worked with her. Like, after she began her new relationship, he began harassing her. He began sending his ex-wife derogatory text messages, calling her you know, slurs that you use against gay people. He kept information from her that prevented her from doing her job correctly, which is scary because this is a prison. He threatened to report her friends at the workplace uh, to authorities. Why? Who cares? He's still going to report them just to take it out on her. And at first, Jean did not say anything, you know, to the higher ups. She was hoping she could keep the peace, try to take care of it on her own. But in 2016, when it became too much to ignore, she filed a complaint against her ex-husband, John, who still worked there, with the Missouri Department of Corrections. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. They did not investigate the matter. So she filed a second complaint. And this time, after they ignored that one, she got the warden of the prison who I think is a friend of hers, she got him to complain on her behalf because maybe they'll listen to a man. You know what I mean? And like that guy told the higher ups that he worried, the warden said he worried John would bring a gun to the office to kill his ex because he couldn't handle the fact she was in a same-sex relationship. According to the court documents, based on John's conduct, the warden said John was creating a harassing discriminatory and retaliatory, uh, retaliatory work environment for his ex-wife, Jean Finney, based on her sexual orientation. That's how serious all of this was. And the Department of Corrections did not seem to care. So what did Jean Finney do after all that? She sued the Missouri Department of Corrections. She said they were violating the Missouri Human Rights Act by allowing this harassment to go on, creating a hostile work environment all because of her gender and her sexual orientation. So now she sues. Good for her, right? Like she sued them. This case goes to trial. And when you go to trial like this, both sides' lawyers have to settle on who the jurors are to hear the case. And they can ask questions of the jurors. And both sides are allowed to, to a certain amount of times to say, you know what, I heard what that juror said in response to my questions. I don't think they're going to give my side a fair hearing, so I want that juror off the list, right? And this happens all the time in these types of trials. So this is where it gets really interesting because during the course of the trial, 
uh, the questioning, the voir dire of the potential jurors, I'm going to show you from a court document uh, one of the conversations that was had between a lawyer uh, and a potential juror. Here you go. Check this out. This is the lawyer for the Department of Corrections. Okay, thank you. Earlier, I think you had raised your paddle on the question about growing up in a religion where it was taught that homosexuality was a sin. Do you, can you, was that something that you were taught when you were growing up? And according to this potential juror, the juror says, no, it's in the Bible. The Bible talks about it. But as I tried to say, a sin is a sin. And every one of us here sins. And I don't imagine any of you would deny it. We all do. It's just part of our nature. And it's something we struggle with, hopefully, throughout our life. So there isn't, homosexuality isn't worse, any worse a sin than stealing something. It's a sin is a sin. It's all on the same level. And then the lawyer says, do you think that would impact your ability to be a fair and impartial juror in this case? Absolutely not. That has really nothing to do with, in a negative way, with whatever this case is going to be about. Okay, I'm going to pause there, but just to so we can be on the same page, this juror said they believe homosexuality is a sin. Why do they believe homosexuality is a sin? Because they said, because the Bible says so. But then this person, this potential juror says, yeah, I think homosexuality is a sin. However, I think lots of things are sins. I think we are all sinners. And then to clarify, the, the lawyer for the Department of Corrections says, okay, but is this case involves a lesbian. Do you think you can be impartial in a case that like involves a same-sex relationship? And the juror says, I'm good. I'll be fine. I promise I will be unbiased, impartial. Okay. Now imagine there were three jurors who basically said all of those things. They said they think homosexuality is a sin. They, all of them also said, but I can be totally impartial about it. Okay. So the Department of Corrections, um, I'm sorry, the lawyers for Gene Finney basically said, uh, we, we don't necessarily trust that those jurors are going to be impartial. So judge, can we have them kicked out, basically? Can we have them struck from the jury pool? Because uh, I don't think they're going to give our client a fair shake. And the judge at the time agreed. She said, I want to, quote, err on the side of caution. She also said, there are plenty of other jurors available. So like kicking out these three, we'll still have plenty of people to choose from. And I think it's also important to note, there were other open Christians on the jury and no one suggested kicking them out. So they probably believe the same stuff. But those three openly said homosexuality is something I believe is a sin. And because of that, they were excluded. Now, the Department of Corrections lawyers, who probably like those jurors who are biased against gay people, they said, hey, you know, if you're rejecting those three jurors, that could get into the bounds of religious discrimination. But they didn't say anything more. And again, for reasons I just told you, I don't think that was religious discrimination because no one was saying, let's kick them off because they're Christian. We're saying, let's kick them off because they said homosexuality is a sin. And this case kind of centers around a same sex relationship. So it's not out of the question. Okay. So those three jurors were kicked off. No one really fought about it. The case goes to trial. And guess what? Gene Finney's side wins the case. The court awarded her $175,000 in non-economic damages and another $100,000 in punitive damages. Case resolved. She wins. Hallelujah, right? Well, then the Department of Corrections lawyers said, you know what? Now that we see how this has all played out, we want a new trial. Why? Because the, quote, blanket exclusion of certain jurors on the basis of their faith even though they promised to be impartial, they said it violated the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution and the Equal Protection Clause of the Missouri Constitution and a different part of the Missouri Constitution. Basically, they lost the case and they're like, who can we blame this on? We can't blame it on ourselves. We can't blame it on the law for being against us because we were wrong. Uh, let's blame it on the fact that those three random jurors who are bigots, uh, they were kicked out. Let's blame that. And basically, the appeal was denied by a trial court. 
So they appealed again to the Missouri Court of Appeals, and that was also denied. Uh, basically, those justices said, if you had a problem with this, you had an obligation to raise those concerns in the moment, and you did not do that. You can't wait for the trial to be over and then say, oh, but we had a problem with the jurors back in the day. We didn't say anything about it at the time, but that was our concern. Like, you can't retroactively complain about a tainted jury pool. They also pointed out those jurors. This is what the Missouri Court of Appeals said. They said the jurors were not excluded because they were Christian, only because they had strong views against homosexuality, which was kind of central to this case. And they noted there were no complaints by any side about the 12 people who actually heard the case. So like, even if those three people were kicked out, all of you were fine with the 12 people who heard the case. So like, what are you mad about? You got 12 impartial jurors. You're just mad because you didn't get three of them beforehand. Like, what are you mad about? So that's what the appellate court said, knock down the appeal. And then the Department of Corrections applied, appealed again to the U.S. Supreme Court, hoping that this right-wing court would take up their case and say, yeah, well, you can't discriminate against three bigots. So on Tuesday of this week, the U.S. Supreme Court said, yeah, we are not hearing this case. This is not important enough for us to hear, is what I assume they said. Uh, like, it's not enough for us to hear so we're just going to deny the appeal. And usually, if the Supreme Court says we're not going to hear your case, they can do that with one line in an order that just goes out. And a lot of cases are on there because they can't, they don't have time to hear everything. They only hear certain types of cases. But Samuel Alito said, listen, I agree that we should not hear this case. Why? Because the Department of Corrections lawyers did not do the paperwork. They did not file their complaints in time. They didn't follow the procedure to complain about jurors. Like, they did everything wrong, so we're not going to hear this case. I agree. I agree with what Sam Alito said in that case. But then Samuel Alito decided to just add on an extra five pages explaining his concern. He didn't have to do this. He just decided to chime in to explain his thinking. He says, yeah, we should not hear the case. However, I am disturbed by what the case reveals. And let me show you what he wrote here. Okay. All right. Here's, here it is. It's five pages. You can see at the very top of the document here, uh, Missouri Department of Corrections versus Gene Finney. Here's Samuel Alito. In this case, let me blow this up a bit. In this case... The court below reasoned that a person who still holds traditional religious views on questions of sexual morality is presumptively unfit to serve on a jury in a case involving a party who is a lesbian. This hold, That holding exemplifies the danger that I anticipated in Obergefell, namely that Americans who do not hide their adherence to traditional religious beliefs about homosexual conduct will be labeled as bigots and treated as such by the government. Man, oh man. First of all, notice his euphemism for the word bigot. Those people on the jury in the jury pool, they were not bigots. They just held traditional religious views on questions of sexual morality. Like, yeah, they're bigots. We know. It, just because they say, my religion tells me to be a jerk, does not give you license to be a jerk on a case involving someone that you're a bigot towards. Like, what, what's with the euphemism here? But also, he said back in Obergefell, that's the case that made marriage equality legal nationwide. He said, and he quotes himself, I said people who disagree will be labeled as bigots and treated as such. Because, yeah, because they're bigots. Like, what are you mad about? That's why people don't like Alito either, because he makes horrible decisions. Like, you should be criticized for some things. You know what I mean? Um, but he's basically mad because it's already not okay. A, a lawyer who's trying to select a jury, you can't say, hey, that, that juror is black and my client is uh, not black. And, like, I think, I think that guy's going to be racist toward my client. So I want him struck from the jury because of his race. You cannot do that. It's illegal. I mean, there are ways around it that a lot of lawyers have used, but you can't do that. 
You also can't say, well, she's a woman and I don't want her hearing the case. You can't do that. You can't discriminate on, against jurors on the basis of race or gender. And what Samuel Alito is saying is you also then should not be able to kick them off of a jury pool because of their religion. But again, they were not kicked off because of their religion. They were kicked off because they're bigots. They just explain their bigotry using religion. That is a different thing, okay? That's the point. And also, this is not part of the case, but it's realistic. Every Christian church you can imagine, like, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. A lot of evangelical megachurches, let me start there, Southern Baptist churches, they do this game all the time. They say, yeah, homosexuality is a sin, but everything's a sin. We're all sinners. But in practice, like, we all know some sins are more equal than others, right? The Catholic Church believes uh, homosexual acts are a grave sin, and they believe divorce is a sin, and they believe abortion is a sin. But guess what? If you work at a Catholic school and they discover you're in a same-sex relationship, they will fire you. Well, what if you're a woman and you quietly have an abortion and don't tell people about it? They won't know, so they're not going to get rid of you. What if you got divorced? They're not going to fire you over that. Like, again, they think everything's a sin, but some sins matter more. That's how it works in practice, right? Other stuff that's a sin, the church looks the other way. And that's why what those jurors said should be alarming. Because they were like, yeah, homosexuality is a sin, but I'm impartial and everything's a sin. Yeah, but if you think homosexuality is a sin, I don't know that you're going to give my client, who's a lesbian, a fair hearing. And so I think it's fair to ask a judge, like, let's not use this person when we have other people available, right? Um, other stuff to keep in mind, like, what does a traditional view of homosexual conduct mean? Like, Samuel Alito went on and on about, these people just hold traditional religious views. Well, guess what? I could cite you Bible verses that say, if a man lies with a man as he lies with a woman, what's the consequence for it in the Bible? It's not a slap on the wrist. It's death. And I know, like, most Christians are not going to approve of that, but they all believe sinners are, deserve to be tortured for eternity in hell. Just because it's traditional doesn't make it okay. Um, so again, no one is suggesting Christians be excluded from juries. And there were Christians in that jury pool. And at least one of the people who raised their hand and said they were Christian was on the jury. But if someone openly admits that certain sexual orientations are sinful, I wouldn't trust them to be impartial. It's not that complicated. Bigots shouldn't be on a jury if the case involves the thing they are bigots about. Okay, that's that's all that that's why this case is alarming. Samuel Alito went out of his way to suggest that anti-gay bigots should not be struck from a jury uh, in a case that involves gay people. And the broader picture of what he's saying is that amounts to religious discrimination by treating bigots like the bigots they are and not trusting them not to be bigots. That counts as religious discrimination, too. It is an absurd thing to say. It's not like the Supreme Court ruled that way. It's just him chiming in saying, hey, I know we're not going to listen to this case, but while I have your attention, let me just go ahead and say this. Um, and that's why it made some news this week, because he is saying under the laws, under the rulings we've made in the past, this conservative court, uh, this is where he wants to head. He wants to make sure any sort of religious bigotry is permitted because anything less would be faith-based discrimination. And if you get him the right case, and this one was not it, he is so ready to rule in favor of not allowing anyone to criticize like faith-based bigotry. He even wrote in this thing right here, uh, let me show you this one last thing. I would vote to grant review in this case were it not for the fact that the Court of Appeals concluded that they didn't dismiss the jurors properly and all that. Like, if not for the details of this case, because this case is not the one, but he is ready to hear this case and you know exactly how he would rule. That's why this was so disturbing. Uh, I think I will stop there for now. There, there. I, I can see questions here, but what else we got here? <clears throat> People can't tell the difference between facts and opinions. 
the same percentage have issues understanding their biases. No kidding. Like if you grow up in a church where you were taught homosexuality is a sin, then all your testimony that says, yeah, but I'll be impartial. Like, yeah, you don't know that you would be. How many gay people do you hang out with? How many gay people do you know? Why should we trust that you would actually be impartial? Because if nothing else, what if you're torn? Who are you going to give the benefit of the doubt to? You know what I mean? So disturbing. It's Missouri. Of course, there were other Christians in the jury pool. This is a ridiculous argument. No kidding. Um, I wish I, I mean, I don't know how many there were, but you're right. I'm sure there were a lot. Thanks, Maya. Alito and Thomas do like to write their own BS on every opinion or lack thereof. You know Alito was seething that he didn't get to hear this case. Like everyone, even the other conservatives are like, yeah, dog, this isn't it. And he's like, but I want to. And then he had to explain himself. All right, fine, we won't do it, but I would if I could. Like he has to explain that he would be a bigot if he had the opportunity, just give him that opportunity. Alito, knowing that the law was followed, still lamented the fact that he can't use the case to allow bigots to harass the LGBT community. Yep, that's my fear. Again, why would you sit out this election? Do not let a Republican Senate block Biden's nominations or approve Trump's nominations in the future. It would be a disaster. What Alito is doing is explaining to his donors why he could not manipulate the decision on this case. Hey, I that is a fair point. He wants that nice Clarence Thomas treatment from his billionaire uh, friends. I'm a jury coordinator. Ooh, thanks, Janet. Christians are not excluded from juries for being Christian. Of course they're not. You know that. I know that. Samuel Alito is the only dude who doesn't seem to know that. And unfortunately, he's the most powerful man in the country. Close to it. Hemant does the best research. I appreciate his work. I don't, but I appreciate your comment, Sean. Thank you so much. Uh, I pull from a lot of very, I try to pull from a lot of very smart sources. What is your skincare regimen? I'm Indian. That's all I got. 